Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. So good to be with you all again. And um, today we're going to look at quite a difficult subject, uh, sexuality and specifically the whole stronghold I see raising its head for years now, pornography. And um, so we're going to look at that in the context of, of the scriptures. And again, I want to encourage you, this is about God's love for us in bringing us into a sweet freedom of Jesus. So remember that Jesus bore our sins on the cross so that we should be free from the power of sin. So I'm bringing this to you as a, yeah, as an older man, somebody that got saved at 35. And when I got saved, I was struggling with stuff. So I want to share that with you. I want to share what I've seen over the course of the, thir uh, the past 30 years as I've ministered to hundreds and hundreds of people worldwide seeing many people delivered many people healed many people set free because of the blood of jesus and the finished work of the cross so it's all in the context of god's love god's grace to us god desiring for us to walk in freedom and for us to have a correct understanding of our sexuality so there's a lot of subjects in sexuality that need to be talked about guys it's not easy to talk about this stuff because you know it, it can feel a bit awkward. So I just want to say to you, you could find some of the stuff I'm going to say offensive. If you're very sensitive, don't listen to this. <laughs> um, this is not to embarrass anybody. But, you know, our sexuality and our sex lives are something we need to talk about. And sadly, it's been you know, considered like a taboo subject in many cultures. I know in African culture, especially I live in South Africa. I know in African culture, it is taboo to talk about one's sexuality, one's sex life. And, you know, it's, a, it's an awkward subject. And within the, within the church, it's a, an awkward subject. And yet, to be honest with you, the Bible, if you go through the scriptures, sometimes the Bible is very vivid and very, um, very sexual, to be honest with you. And I know people might find that offensive, but, you know, you can go into some of the scriptures where it talks about uh, the lusts of Israel, um, describes it in, in a sexual sense, um, Israel lusting after prostitutes and um, whoring. And the reason for that is because sexuality is a reflection of a relationship of intimacy. And let me just say that the relationship between the church, who is the bride of Christ, and we are the church, and Christ is described in the context of a marriage. And to have a marriage, you have to have physical intimacy. You have to have a good sex life. You have to be able to make love to each other and understand that it's holy and righteous and a beautiful gift of God. In fact, it says... Uh, in the scriptures, do not deprive one another except for times of fasting and prayer. But, you know, it's, 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 uh, it says that a man's body does not belong to the man but to the wife. And a, a wife's body does not belong to the wife but to the man. You see, intimacy, intimacy in marriage, love making, sex in marriage is a union. It's a beautiful, holy thing. And um, my wife and myself, uh, we, <laughs> we are so blessed in that area. But literally, when we make love, we give praise to God. We give thanks to God. And, and you know, you might go, oh, <laughs> I don't want to hear about this. Well, I'm just telling you, there's a reality in having a wonderful God-given uh, um, sex life. And over the years, it just got better and better and better. And um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a union. In fact, it says, actually, if you got out as an immoral person and, you, and have sex, with a prostitute, you are uniting yourself with, with her. You see, sex, lovemaking, in the context of marriage, it's lovemaking outside of marriage because it, it, it's lust and it's actually Im immoral. So a good sex life is res re reserved for the covenant of marriage to bind a man and wife together physically, but there's a there's a... Something that happens even with the soul when you make love to your wife. So the sexual act is holy and it's a righteous thing 
for a married man and woman to be if you by the way if you're married and you don't have a sex life get some help okay our sex lives as christians is supposed to be fulfilling wonderful and encouraging and uplifting for both male and female and if you haven't got that get it you get some counseling and that my wife and myself had to have counseling we 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 had help you know especially if you're young you don't know what to expect you don't know what is what you know what is acceptable and unacceptable and i just want to just say we have a freedom within marriage but we do not have that freedom outside of marriage sex outside of marriage is harmful and immoral and sinful and it needs to be reserved for the marriage covenant because it's there to enhance the marriage covenant and just as in ephesians um, five and six it talks about married life and actually in the context of warfare so listen to me when you say this sex within marriage good beautiful love making within marriage is an act of spiritual warfare because actually the devil hates it that is why the world out there okay is falling into the scheme of the devil and we call to take our stand against the schemes of the devil Ephesians 5 talks about godly living in the context of marriage and it says I'm describing Christ and the church that intimacy that that oneness of the bride and the bridegroom is a reflection of the intimacy that we are called to have with Christ okay he 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 describes it in the context of marriage but then he goes on to say it's spiritual warfare okay and, there, and there's a reason why Ephesians 5 is followed by Ephesians 6 because in marriage Okay, it's one of the things the devil hates the most is godly Christian marriages. So in the context of that, that is why the world whoops, is falling into the scheme of the devil um, into sexual immorality. So I came out of a new age background, a cultic type background. Excuse me, let me just adjust his chair. And there's a direct link between the occult or esoteric spirituality and immorality sexual acts partly because by the way demons can be imparted through the sexual act that is why witches and wizards and these guys in, in indulge in ritualistic sexual acts incestuous acts all types of perversity because it is an impartation in the sexual act and it's one of the reasons why it needs to be reserved within the holy context of marriage because if you go and unite yourself with a prostitute, have sex with a prostitute, for instance, people, I want to tell you, you take on her demons. And that is why it's a scheme of the devil. Prostitution and prostitution is not okay. I'm sorry. It's not supposed to be a thing that we're supposed to be indulging in or see as okay, despite it being politically correct these days. It is degrading to women to have to do that. There's nothing fine about it. There's nothing noble about it. And God wants to set us free. Remembering that Mary Magdalene and, and many prostitutes in the scriptures were redeemed by Christ, accepted in, so we don't judge them. We don't judge people in the sex industry, but we bring them in because they are beautiful children of God. They just don't know it. But prostitution and, and sexual, ritualistic sexual acts it's very much a part of um, the occult. That's why they used to have shrine prostitutes at Delphi in, 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 you know, in the Greek uh, gods. And, and that's why Satanists participate in ritualistic sex, sexual acts because it, it inspires and imparts the demonic. I said, this is going to be quite a big subject, so I'm probably going to have to split this up into, into a number of sessions. But hang in there with me, okay? <laughs> We need to understand the spiritual significance of the sexual act. You know, right in the beginning, it said that um, Adam knew Eve. I think the word is nada. Adam knew Eve. That's the same. And, and, and that means the physical act of lovemaking. Adam made love to Eve. Adam knew Eve. They use the same word that Adam knew God. See, that it's, 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 it's a spiritual, something spiritual goes on in the context of holiness in, in marriage, of lovemaking. And it was the same word of intimacy that Adam knew Eve sexually, 
and he knew God, okay, on, in a physical sense, he related to God. He walked in the garden with God. Intimacy. In other words, there's intimacy. So I just want to just say to you, there's, sex is holy in the context of marriage. It's beautiful. It's to be enjoyed. You know, it didn't say in the Bible, hey, just make love when you want to procreate. It says men, women, Christian men and women do not deprive each other because it's a beautiful, wonderful, joyful thing. <laughs> And we often, uh, when we make love, we often find ourselves laughing at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, it's because it, it's so beautiful and it's very healthy for you. And it's something to be embraced and sought after. A good, a good sex life within marriage. So in the occultic sense, in the satanic realm, in the devil's scheme of things, it says, take your stands against the schemes of the devil. And one of the stands we need to uh, uh, recognize that we need to stand for is sexual purity holiness we need to stand against immorality sex outside of marriage you need to stand against perversion and we see all types of perversion taking place adultery perversion homosexuality is perversion pedophilia is perversion bestiality is perversion and, you know, things that were unacceptable years ago become, are now becoming legally permissible and acceptable within society. And we as Christians, you know, we're not called to be prudes. Let me just say that. But we are called to live moral lives, lives that glorify Jesus. And sexual immorality does not glorify Jesus. You know, in Romans 1, it talks about, you know, end of the ages, it says that, um, that society will become rebellious. It says that God will hand them over to delusions because they, they, they knew about God, but they rejected God. And they will be given over to all sorts of sexual immorality. The debasing of each other's bodies. The debasing. That's what, that's what sex outside of marriage does. It debases the man and the woman. It's, it makes people feel unclean and secretly. You know, a lot of people are depressed fearful because they're engaging in immoral lives and and it just degrades you it it makes you feel like an animal that because it's appealing to the fleshy animal instincts sex outside of marriage is just lust and it gets more and more lustful it's addictive and you know pornography is an absolute reflection of this scheme of the devil it is disgraceful to see how many pornographic websites are and that that liberal countries, liberal nations encourage this stuff as, as a norm. You know, like sometimes I go to the gym and I sit there and I listen to the, guy, the guys talking. Guys talk about having their porn of stash. Stash of porn. Ah, wrong way around. The stash of porn. Porn of stash. They've got a stash of porn and, and they actually share with each other openly in the change rooms. Like, hey, I've got this guy. They even talk about different prostitutes. And I... I like sit there as an older man and I'm listening. I'm thinking, oh my God, these guys don't know what they're doing. They just do not know how that robs them. I think it was Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones. Old, old, old time guys, you know, like 1960s pop group. But you know, those pop groups had multiple sexual activities. And he said, uh, just a comment, not, not that I put much credence in what he says, but this was Mick Jagger said, he said, it feels like every time I had sex with a woman, I gave a part of myself to her. You see, it robs you. It does rob you. And actually, when you have sex with someone other than your wife or your husband, you actually establish a soul tie with them. That is the other reason why witches and wizards have sex with their initiates, because it establishes a tie and gives them a right in to, to control. So it becomes controlling. So the sexual act is very powerful spiritual act. Now that may sound funny because the word out there makes makes out it's just about fun. It's, it's almost like a sport now, you know. Let's go out and get drunk and have sex on a Friday night. See how many guys we can have sex with, how many girls we can have sex with. Yeah, there's nothing in it. It's just it's just enjoyment. Well, it's not. It's a spiritual act. And you are binding yourself to that person for life through a soul tie. And if that person's involved in demonic activity, well, that, that, it, that gives them an access into your life. Now, in Christ, that can all be broken. But what we need to understand is those things are strong. 
And when we come to Christ, we need freedom from that. We need those ties cut. And often we pray with people and we, we find they have sickness and stuff and strange stuff happening and demonic visitations. And then we cut the ties. We proclaim those ties cut at the cross. That they have a new inheritance, a new DNA, a new, new crea creature, a new creation. As it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the new creation, the old is gone. And when they realize those things have been cut, well, it's like shoom, the sword of the Spirit cuts them. Suddenly they find freedom. You see, we need freedom from sexual immorality and from the sexual acts we've been involved in. Now, sometimes that happens when you give your life to Christ and you baptize and, and you know, it just, phew, it's just gone. But for some people, for reasons I don't fully understand, it remains and there needs to be ministry into that area. So if you want freedom in that area, get some freedom. So just to, just to reiterate, the, the sexual act is a spiritual, it's a physical act that has spiritual consequences. And we need to take it serious. That is why a scheme of the devil out there is to make sex casual. Everything is sexual. It's like Sex is nothing. You can just have sex with someone and walk away from them. Well, the truth of the matter is you can't. You might not ever see them again physically, but you are tied to them in the soulish realm. As the scripture says, if you unite yourself to an immoral person in a sexual act, you are bound to them. You're joined together as one. And I'm telling you, as you know, there's some people you don't want to be joined to. <laughs> you see their lives. It's like, wow, I don't want to be joined to that person. And that is one of the reasons why we need to apply the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus came to set us free. Jesus came to cut us free from the power of sin and death. And sexual immorality, pornography, all those perversions that we've talked about are sin. But the good news is, it says, sin shall not master you because you are not under the law but under grace. So the good news is, whatever you're addicted to sexually, and many, many people, mainly guys, but I'm seeing more and more women are becoming addicted to pornography and stuff. See, guys are stimulated through the eyes. Okay, we look, women are beautiful. Ladies, you are beautiful. And I don't mean that in a lustful way. You were created in God's image and men are in awe of you. And in fact, they want to possess like a little bit of you. That's what sex is about. Sex is about also owning something of that other person. I'm going to go into that just now. But women, women are beautiful. Men are also beautiful. That's why people are attracted to each other. And there's not a wrong thing in being attracted. Okay, but we are called to reserve that attraction and acting out of that attraction to our husbands or our wives. And that's a beautiful thing. But... We need to understand the devil has come to defile God's gift of sexuality and, and lovemaking. He's come to defile it. He's come to defile us. That's what the devil is about. He's a defiler. He's a destroyer. He comes to rob, kill, and destroy. So we need to understand this whole thing of sexual, of, you know, I grew up uh, in the 1960s as a child, and it was like the sexual revolution Make love, not war. Free love. And you can literally go around and make love to anyone you wanted to, you know, or to have sex with anyone you wanted to. And it became more and more lustful. And what happens, that started to break down the family because ultimately sexual immorality breaks down family life. That's why so many men or so many people, in, even in the Christian church, fallen into this trap of thinking it's okay to, to use pornography. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's defiling you as a person. It's dishonoring God. It defiles your relationship with God. It doesn't separate. God doesn't separate himself from you. But let me tell you something. You start separating yourself from God. And we need to understand it's part of the scheme of the devil to destroy family life. Guys, I'm going to stop this video here. This is part one. <laughs> If you like this video, please share it with your friends. If you need some ministry, please get hold of me. I'm going to go straight into part two.